Okay, what is going on everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So this is a little bit of a sequel to the um, previous week, basically, or probably previous video. So basically, we went to a tiebreaker uh, for this week, and if we win, we get a week off, we get a buy, and we go straight to the preliminary finals. If we lose, we have to go to the semifinals and play there. So um yeah so that's that uh basically we have a best of three uh ss is going to be one of them and then we are going to play dpp and i think sm as that so we're going to start off with uh the first game which is kaiter versus bully croak uh so two very very strong players two people who definitely know what they're doing and uh yeah let's just jump right into it so kaiter oh is this just the wrong <laughs> this is the no, this is the right one. I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Uh, so yeah, Kaiter's rolling up with the team, um, which unfortunately is has a pretty rough matchup into Bully's team. So Fungus into Pharaoh Seed and Natu does make things tough because at least with Natu, you can sludge bomb into that thing. You can get a poison off with your Fungus. And it's not like, they, they're, it's not like they're always going to go into, you know, they might go into Marini, you know, because because of the sludge bomb ch chance, they're gonna, you know, they can go to Marini on the spore, you can spore it, whatever. Um, but with the Pharaoh, it is just a complete hard stop. It's not scared of Giga, it's not scared of spore, it's not scared of sludge bomb. So that basically makes Fungus extremely irrelevant. And unfortunately, what's even worse is that Mianfu, because it's our only poison type, it means that Mianfu just comes in, uh, fakes it out, U uh, HJKs into it, U turns out of there, whatever, knocks it off. And it's not like we can even double because Mianfu just is going to U turn into Fu into Pharaoh and we just lose momentum. So Kaither basically needs to knock off the Pharaoh and then trap it with Trap Inch and then like superpower it or something like that. Because if not, uh, we're never going to get past the Pharaoh. We're never going to get past the Pharaoh seed. There's still hope though. It's not like we can't win this game. Abra plus Abra plus Pori definitely are very threatening to Bully's team. Um, but it's just going to be a matter of can we break down this Pharaoh seed. That's literally what it's going to come down to. On the opposing side, Abra of their own is quite scary. Um, but we do have our Pawnyard. We do have our own. Uh, we have our Trap Inch. We have options and may potentially a Scarf Porygon. Uh, if we are Scarf or a Violate, uh, we should be able to take one hit here or there. Basically, um, we have options. But is this going to come down to can we break th through that Pharaoh Seed? So let us jump right into it. So we are going to see Abra lead uh, into Mianfu. So Abra is probably going to want to substitute on this turn. Um, I kind of spoiled the turn. but Or it could Psychic, right? It can Psychic very freely. Um, it can take a fake out and then substitute up on it. Um, there's a lot of potential and different, like potential different uh, avenues for how this can go. The this the safe option here is, you know, if you fake out into inner focus Abra and then Psychic and get killed, that would be really bad. Um, so. Bully probably expecting that is going to go for the sub. Um, Inner Focus Abra isn't as common now, but it's still something to be afraid of because it can get these kills turn one very easily. So, uh, Bully probably expecting the switch from Yanfu. Kaiter, you know, Kaiter probably going to want to respect that potential uh, is going to go for sub, but Kaiser just reads to the situation really well and gets a U-turn off right off the bat. So that's really, really, really clutch as Ponyard is going to come in and can very comfortably just uh, go for a knockoff now and get some good chip off. Also, <laughs> is very comfortable going into Ponyard because Substitute reveals that it's probably sub focus punch, meaning that Ponyard, it can't touch Ponyard uh, at all. Uh, without a sub up, right? So that works out really well. Knockoff on the Mianfu is huge, as our Mianfu doesn't have its does have its Violite still. But this is what I'm talking about. Fungus is going to come in on the U-turn and or on the knockoff. Take a U-turn is at 50%. And what do you do if you're Kaiser? You have to go for Spore or something or like Giga Drain. But like you can't do anything because this Pharaoh is just going to be able to get up a spike for free. Um, and unfortunately, it's Spike not even Stealth Rock. So like that means every time it comes in, it just gets another layer, and we have no removal. So uh that is pretty unfortunate and this also is really really rough hjk miss on the tie win is really really good for us because uh or is really really excuse me would have been really good for us as we would have definitely knocked that thing out as uh, uh or w maybe not would have been able to knock that thing out altogether but would have gotten it so low to the point that even if it was regenerator it's only like 30 40 percent maybe um yeah maybe 40 45 percent which is not that high and you're gonna see it actually it kind of comes down to it a little bit later in the game um so yeah that miss really really sucks and of course we take 50 percent on our mianfu and then we have to sack it basically at that point so uh kaiser not wanting to let the sub go up just go back a turn here 
um, not wanting the sub to go up here, decides to just U-turn probably, um, and Bully just goes for the Psychic there. Not much that you can do in that situation, it's really hard, because if their sub goes up, you just lose the game, basically. So, at this point, Kaiser makes a nice play, he's going to go for the Rocks, does need to start getting Chip off on the Natu, on the Diglett, on the Pharaoh. Obviously, it's not doing too much to these things, but it is better than nothing, um, and it's somewhat valuable, so... You know, again, this uh, this thing being at full instead of being at like, you know, 30% does make things a lot tougher. But, you know, it is what it is as you can just as the opponent can just keep going for a U-turn on this Fungus. And what do you do? You really can't do anything if you're Kyther. Um, you're just going to Giga Drain up on the Abra and now go into Ponyard um, as Abra just goes for another substitute. And at this point, um, you have to just... You have to figure out like, how you're going to get past this thing. So Kyther makes a nice play here. It actually goes for uh, Trap Inch on the Focus Punch. So Trap Inch is going to take this really comfortably and is now uh, should be able to knock this thing out or at least break the sub with uh, First Impression. But I think Kyther mentioned that later that he didn't Calc. He thought he would live Psychic and Psychic just goes off and kills this thing, which is unfortunate. I think... Yeah, I mean, first impression is probably just the better play altogether. Um, unless the opponent went for double sub or maybe protect. Um, may maybe what I can see maybe the play was here was like thinking, OK, if I first impression and they double sub, if they double sub, then that can be kind of rough, especially if you think you live the psychic at that point. Um, so I can understand potentially why uh, Kaithir just went for EQ that turn, but um, yeah, just you know, there's not much you can, <laughs> not much else to say. I think he also just didn't calc that that turn or just didn't, yeah, and it just was was unfortunate. Yeah, so um, just to forgot to calc, um, it happens, and when you think you live, which you would expect that 60% probably would live that, but it ends up being a roll. Um, depending on, it just ends up being a roll. So I can also understand the EQ play if, uh, if the double sub was on his mind, but uh, it is what it is. Is now Kyther's kind of forced to take the shadow ball uh, to break the sub, has to hope to win the tie here. It's just a really rough situation to be in. Is Natu is going to come in here and uh, Ponyard is going to come in on the double, knowing that Bully is not going to want to risk. Uh, well, not going to want to risk that as Iron is going to come out from Ponyard, does miss the Heat Wave, which is nice, and is going to Sucker Punch and get rid of the Natu. So a little bit of luck kind of coming into our favor, but we are still pretty far behind as Mianfu is going to come in and Fungus, again, is the only real answer to this thing. Unfortunately, uh, Mianfu plus Pharaoh Seed just gives us so little option against this thing as Kyther makes a nice play here and does get the U-turn. Um, popped off so that mean or gets the berry juice popped off on the u-turn which works out quite nicely as the knock is going to come out and get rid of this marini as a violet so that works out well kyther does need to get a flinch here and if he gets a flinch there's a little bit of uh there is some potential here there's definitely some potential so unfortunately doesn't get the flinch it does take 43 percent from the scald and now has to go uh just for another iron head and gets a ton of damage off on the mianfu takes another u-turn so it's playing really aggressive and it's working out here um as another iron head's gonna come out and unfortunately doesn't get the high roll here it's gonna go for the knock and knock out this marini so there's still potential here unfortunately this pharaoh hasn't been forced to come in um because of the u-turn it uh because of how Bully's been playing, just you turning aggressively on the Fungus and allowing the Abra to come in. Uh, because with this Pharaoh at full, even if um, this Agility Porygon is able to get an Agility up, it's going to be nearly impossible to break through this Pharaoh without it being knocked or anything. We have to like, go for a freeze, basically. So at this point, Fungus is going to come in yet again. Um, Fungus is going to take the U-turn and Diglett's going to come in and just trap this thing pretty comfortably. So EQ comes out, knocks out the Fungus, unfortunately. Life Orb is revealed and Porygon's going to come in. Uh, we are going to see the download, unfortunately, gets a plus one attack raise, which does make things tough as we are going to see the Ice Beam come out, doing a good chunk to this thing. And again, you know, as we saw before, if this thing wasn't a Violet or wasn't HJK'd before, it wouldn't be able to come in as comfortably on like Iron Head and all these things. Um, so that HJK miss does matter, or it does kind of make a tough matchup even harder uh, for Kyther. So, you know, it is what it is. As, yeah, the Fake Out's gonna come out here and make sense uh, for Bully. Basically, what he was doing here was just faking out to make sure that. Um, 
to see the damage if it was Scarf or not, and we he saw that it was a Violite, and can just very comfortably go for HJK. Abra's just gonna go for a Psychic here, and at this point it's pretty much impossible for Kyther to win. Diglett's gonna come out, knock this thing out, and then uh, 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 Ponyard just can't break Pharaoh unfortunately at one at one HP. So Sucker Punch from Pawn. We're gonna see the sub come out, and that's gonna be the game. So it was a good game, I I would say. Kyther uh, played well. Uh, Kyther played really well. Uh, for how tough this matchup was, and Bully played really well as well. Um, obviously, they're two really great players, so nothing really out of the ordinary with them playing well. But it is good to see. Obviously, the HJK miss is unfortunate, um, but it is what it is as part of the game. And uh, yeah, so uh, Europe is up 1 and 0. Oh. Okay, and here we have Taz versus Lily AC. So Taz is going to lead off with the Snover, Snover lead. Okay pretty standard i guess across the board very comfortably can just go for an hp fire probably there um and gets the crit and does a ton of damage which is huge meaning that another hp is very very free here so gets a double crit which is nice um as taz is gonna get off to a nice start with uh with our uh with our pharaoh here excuse me with our uh Snover here. Snover is going to, our Duskull is going to come in on the Zen Headbutt and fire off a Wisp as Bronzer is going to come in to into, er, absorb that and Shadow Sneak is able to come out and get some nice damage off. Uh, trick from Orenberry, for, sorry, Trick for the Orenberry is a nice play for Millie. Forcing more chip onto the bra onto the Duskull, um, which is nice. Obviously, as you can see, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a relatively even trade here instead of what it looked like before where Duskull is going to come out on this very much on top, but um, Taz is still in a good spot, can go into Krogonk here, eating the Ice Shard, and now can scare this thing out, or, you know, fire off a Focus Blast, um, and Snover is going to take the hit. Doesn't have a good switch in, probably. Uh, Lily probably doesn't have a good switch in. Maybe the Ghastly, but didn't want to risk that. As Ghastly is going to come in, and Stunky can come in on that very, very comfortably, and scare this thing out with, uh, potential for Pursuit. Lily, knowing this, is just going to explode off the bat. And Munchlax is going to come in on the Duskull yet again. At this point, you can just thief this thing, so that's nice to see. Again, stealing the Orenberry, getting back up the full, taking the Ice Punch. This thing can't recycle or anything like that. I don't know if that's even used in this gen or if it's even available, but it's a nice play. Thief thieving that away, keeping this thing low. And at this point, things are looking pretty good for Taz, you know. It's hard to say. There's definitely Gligar probably in the back for Lily AC. Um, but yeah, apparently there's nothing that Lily could do to handle the Gligar. So we will we will take that. So one and one in the tie break and it's just gonna come down to this last game here. Okay, and here we are, game three. We have Luther versus Scotty, formerly known as Osh. So Luther's team pretty standard across the board. If you've been if we've been watching the SM game, this is pretty familiar looking. Vullaby, fighting, star, Fungus, Diglett, Pawniard, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, potentially Z Volibi from Luther, uh, I think is what it ends up being. Um, Fungus, Ponyard, Staryu, Timber, nothing really to say about those Pokemon, like they're pretty standard across the board. Uh, HP Fire on Fungus is going to be good. If it is HP Fire, that means Pharaoh Seed is not that hard of a check. Um, however, which I think most Fungus are, I think most of them are HP Fire. So if that's HP Fire, then we're in a good spot. Um, Timber could be Bulk Up, just could be standard Violite. Um, just like three attacks or something, four attacks, I don't know. Um, so we'll have to see. On Asha's side, we do see the Rufflet. Rufflet isn't something that you see too often, but this thing is this does get access to Hustle, making it very, very strong. Can miss, which is nice for us. So we have to kind of maybe potentially go off of that in the end game, which we'll see. But um, potentially uh, this thing probably being Scarf means that it can do a lot of damage to our team. Uh, we have to be very afraid of that, considering our flying resist is Ponyard, which can definitely get worn down over the course of the game. So let us jump right into... Oh, God. I always forget to do that. That was so unnecessarily loud. Okay. So we're going to see Vola Vola lead, as we are going to see the Protect from the Vola Beat turn one, and we're going to see the Z fly being revealed, blocking that thing. We do take the damage, but we do block that thing from, uh, like, getting the boost or whatever. Um as we are going to reveal our own Z fly the next turn. Um, so very even across the board. But one thing to notice is that theirs did 30%, ours did 25%. So there's a good chance that theirs is adamant and ours is, you know, uh, plus speed nature. So uh, the opponent is going to switch out expecting this as we can very comfortably go for a Brave Bird here. So nice play um, from Luther, kind of reading that situation, reading the calcs here, and can go into Staryu very comfortably on the rocks here and is just going to fire off a rapid spin on the Pharaoh Seed. So um, 
Pharaoh is a little annoying, but we do have options as the spike goes up and we can scare this thing out with our timber as we do fire off an ice punch here. I guess trying to catch maybe like Mudbray or something or rough, I, mean, I doubt rough it, but maybe just trying to do more damage to the Spritzy. But I think knocking this thing off would have also been fine, but it's fine as Fungus is going to come in on a wish here and we are going to see the Mudbray get back up to full and Luther just going to make a nice play and go for Spore, putting that thing to sleep, meaning that rocks aren't going to come up as easily anymore. And now fires off the HP fire, maybe expecting to double into the Pharaoh as Bullaby is going to come in and do a ton of damage with Brave Bird that does an insane amount. As Pharaoh, again, very easy switch for Ash to make, and uh, Staryu can just recover up very comfortably on that as another spike goes up. So Volby comes in, it's going to very comfortably fire off a Brave Bird, does a good chunk to Staryu, but again, uh, Staryu is scared, uh, or sorry, Volby is scared to Staryu, and Staryu can just recover up. So very similar sequence of plays on both ends. As we do see the Psychic being revealed and Sludge Bomb from the Fungus. So definitely not Giga Drain. Uh, at this point, we know that this last move is Synthesis. Um, as we're going to see Volby being sacked to the Hydro Pump there. Um, so good play from Ash, just reading that and getting him on the switch there. So Rapid Spin is going to come back out from the Staryu, getting this thing. Uh, this thing is starting to get low because of all the chip damage. Uh, even with Recover, it's getting low. As Timber is going to come back in, and we are going to see the double in the pawn here, expecting the Spritzy to come back in. So nice play from Luther, trying to bring it back. As now he's able to get up rocks, which is going to be good. Start punishing some of these switches and reads the situation super well, knowing that Rapid Spin is probably going to come out here. Just goes for the knock right off the bat. Isn't afraid. Knows he can probably take any one hit and gets rid of those. Gets rid of the star you, which is nice. Meaning the next time rocks go up, they're there to stay, um, which is awesome. So Timber is going to get the knockoff on the Spritzy, which is really really great to see. And now can ice punch into that thing very comfortably and eats a moon blast. So does ice punch again here um, as the wish goes up. So I think here Luther was trying to like force like a moon blast or a wish or something and just kind of got the plays wrong here it, the protect is so obvious that i think luther just wants to go for the ice punch expecting a switch or something um and unfortunately spritzy just gets back up to full if he went into pawn there that could have been good to get up rocks scare out the spritzy all those things so just got that I, I just got the sequence a little bit wrong there's nothing you can really do about it um because you know it, you know, in the heat of the battle, you know, it's hard to say exactly what he's going to go for. The protect is so obvious, but like, so why wouldn't the opponent not go for it, right? It's just all those things. So it is what it is as Ponyard's going to come in on the Spritzy now. A Spritzy has really no reason not to fire off a Moonblast. And now Pawn is a little bit low. Is able to get up rocks in this turn, but Spritzy just reads, gets, you know, Ash just reads the situation nicely and just goes for another Moonblast, knowing that uh, Luther's going to really want to get uh, uh, rocks up to keep that Rufflet in check. So... Covet steals the steals the Violite, which is unfortunate, as Sludge Bomb is going to come out from the Fungus and uh, can just very comfortably just go for a double HP fire and uh, knock this thing out. As the double spike is pretty unfortunate as well, because that means we can't we start taking a lot of damage from this thing. And at this point, Scarf Rufflet is really hard for us to switch into, right? Brave Bird or Aerial Ace or whatever is going to be really really tough. As Mudbray is just going to come in on uh, on this, as Starry is going to double uh, double switch on. So nice play from Luther here. I think here uh, just goes for the recover, getting back up to full, and potentially could have just gone for Rapid Spin kill here. Getting rid of the spikes would have been good because uh, keeping these things at full HP means that Rufflet could potentially die to uh, recoil damage from Brave Bird, and then from there, you know, potential for Star you to like crit through the violite spritzy and then just win from there i mean that's kind of the only play you have because at this point if you're rufflet rufflet just comes in we have to hope that rufflet misses three attacks but as you can see here like if the if the wrap if the what do you call it if the uh, spikes were away then rufflet takes a little bit more recoil and if it takes a little bit more recoil it, pr it would have died right because as you can see it's at two hp um and at that point it would have been uh could have been game but it is what it is it's something we can really really do about it um it was a tough game and these opponents are really really good and these are just like good good set of matches either way no matter how you look at it there's also a chance that on this turn back here that rapid spin didn't kill um i'm gonna calc it real quick so yeah we're we have the calc here we can load up sm real quick 
SM. We're going to see Vullaby. Weak armor pivot, sure. Versus Star You. Because in this, in this gen, Rapid Spin isn't... Uh, so rapid spin, yeah. So there's a there's a thing. Rapid spin might not even kill. It can only do one HP. There's a ch chance for it to do two HP. And considering that our star you was yeah, it's not even this. Yeah. So like unless we were like life orb, which we definitely were not, right? Yeah, we weren't life orb. So that was the thing. Rapid spin might not even kill this thing because it's at nine percent. That means it has two HP uh, there. So I mean, I guess we would have had to go for it. At that point, it wouldn't have been able to knock us out. Star, you would still probably be able to take any one hit, uh, even Brave Bird. So maybe Rapid Spin into like double Rapid Spin or something like that, or like Rapid Spin into Scald or T Bolt, doesn't really matter. Um, could have won us the game because at that point, we'd have to like sack both Mons to Rufflet. It would die to recoil. And then at that point, we have to just hope we crit the Spritzy with Hydro Pump or whatever our water type move is. Um, or maybe para with T-Bolt, something like that, right? We'd have to we'd have to hope for something like that um, to win the game. So it is, it is what it is. Um, so because of that, we do lose the week, mean, meaning that we do get to play another week. In the in the grand scheme of things, yes, it sucks that we lost. Obviously, uh, we love to win, but it's not a huge deal considering the fact that we have the potential to we we played so well in the regular season that we got a free we get like a second chance, and it's not like we could save the second chance either. Um, because of the fact that um, if you win this next round and let's say like we won this round we would just get a buy for the week it's not like we would be able to save our second chance and like lose again later on I, from what I understand that's how that's how it works so basically we just have to play another week and we should be able to win I'm sure we can win I have a full faith in my team but I think I'll leave it at that I hope everyone has a fantastic day if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing I would really appreciate it um, and if you like this type of video please leave a comment and comment or sorry leave, leave a like and leave a comment if you have any sort of questions concern feedback whatever it is but I'll leave it at that I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one take care bye